What you're watching right there is prophecy, and what you're watching is a great move by the kingdom of God Almighty. It's a great move by the Holy Spirit. Guys, you're watching heaven invade earth. Church, will you join me in welcoming everybody to Open Door Church? Boom. Awesome. I welcome everybody that's listening on the Pinfo Radio Network and all my friends that are watching live on Facebook right now. And I want to invite you guys to be sure and share our Facebook over to your page. And that makes you a rock star evangelist. Amen. I want to say a great big hello to everybody watching on opendoorexperience.com, folks watching on troybrewer.tv, my friends that have gathered here. And guys, this last week has been an incredibly prophetic week, and we are interrupting everything I was going to preach today to address the significance of the hour that you and I are standing in today. And I, because, guys, I want to make a big deal out of the right things. Amen. And guys, it is, it is my great privilege today to tell you, man, that the United States of America has recognized Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel, which puts us in alignment with the Word of God in a way that is unprecedented. This is what God caused the United States of America to be born for. Guys, we were born in the nation 1776. And guys, do you know what 1776 is? It's 888 times 2. You know what 888 is? It's the numerical name of Jesus. You know what two is? It's a faithful witness. 1776 means a faithful witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God Almighty had the United States of America to be born for. I don't care what Barack Obama says. I don't care what liberal media says. I don't care what Hollywood says. We are a nation that was born to be a Christian witness. And one of the great witnesses that you and I are as a nation and as a people is a nation that stands up against the bullies of all of this world and says, we will stand with Israel. Amen. It literally slaps the Muslim world in the face, and frankly, I think it's about time that we started slapping back. Amen. For the world to say, well, you know what you're going to get out of us? We're going to throw a fit, and you're going to get three days of rage. Well, the Bible says, let the heathen rage, let the wicked foam. And that's what I say. That's a perfect response to a heathen world is rage. Amen. Do you know what our response is? Peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Guys, if you would, please open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to get right off into the Word of God, guys, and we're going to go to some really good places. I feel the presence of God here today. He's here today, and you and I are under an open window of heaven as Americans today, and as the body of Christ who stands with the Word of God and who stands with King Jesus and stands with the promises of God in standing with Israel, not just as a, not just as a land and not just as a people, but actually standing with Israel as a prophetic picture of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you and I are praying for the peace of Jerusalem, when you and I are praying for the peace of Jerusalem, and guys, before this service is over with today, we will stand and we will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But know this, we are praying for the, for the Prince of Peace to rule and reign upon His throne, which is the throne of David. And it's not in Fort Worth, Texas, amen. It's not in San Antonio, next to the Alamo, which is where I would have put it, amen. But that's, that's not what God did. God put that in Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel, which literally means the eternal capital of God's people who are in covenant with Him. If you are a Christian, you are a child of Abraham. Tell the person next to you, tell them, say, you are a child of Abraham. That's exactly right. You are a promise of Abraham. The seed of Abraham is two different kinds of people. One is as the sands of the sea, which speaks of a natural people. You know, Adam was created out of dirt. Amen. An earth-like people or a people within the earth or a natural people. And that is natural Islam. That is natural Israel. And but the others, he said, would be as the stars of heaven. Amen. That's that's supernatural Israel. Amen. And guys, we were all supernaturally grafted into this body. The same exact body that Abraham was a part of 4,000 years ago. This has been 4,000 years in the making, and you and I saw it on December the 6th of the year 2017 as Americans go. It's an incredibly, incredibly prophetic hour and time. And you know what? You can miss it because Game of Thrones is so cool. You can miss it because it's time to buy stuff. You can miss it because you got bills to pay, and you're going to bend up. If, if that's you, you're like the thousands and thousands and thousands of other people in Bethlehem that was in Bethlehem at the time of the miracle, and they missed it 
because of the busyness of the moment. This is the way it is with prophetic things. Prophetic people that are into prophetic things walk in prophetic blessing. The same thing is offered to everybody, but most people, it goes right over the head. As the Bible says, God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Why? Because our perception, our perception is geared into so many things other than the heart of Jesus. For those of us that are into the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, for those of us that are into the promises of Abraham, for those of us that are into our blessed hope that the Redeemer is coming back, our eye is not only on Israel, but our eye is on Jerusalem specifically. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, I tell you this, my brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, that means check this out. Behold, I tell you all a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trump will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable body and this mortal body must put on the immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. I love that. Boy, Paul got down when, whenever he wrote that. I mean, he, that brother got down, man. Man, he was in the same kind of anointing as the brother who wrote, bye-bye, Miss American Pie. I mean, just, where does that come up with? Where do you come up with that from? My God, that's anointed. Man, I, I read this and I look at this, and this is all about the return of Jesus Christ, because the first time that Jesus comes back, it's a flyby. It's just a flyby. He doesn't touch down. He flies by to meet us in the air. Amen. And we go into a wedding chamber that is known as the marriage supper of the Lamb, and it's the greatest party that the universe has ever seen at the same exact time that the world goes into tribulation like the world has never seen. There is one thing that's going on for God's people. There's another thing that's going on for God's enemies. And I want to tell you that in the midst of all that, Jesus Christ is revealed to us in a way in intimacy that we can't even, we don't have a grasp for right now. But whatever happens, it changes us so much, we become so bold that we do not think it robbery to share the finest moment of Jesus ever. Whenever He comes back, we actually share that with Him, and He comes back with us. We don't consider it robbery somehow. We don't think that we're not worthy because His righteousness has become our righteousness, His holiness has become our holiness, and His victory has become our victory. And something happens in that period of time on those seven days or across those seven years where things are revealed to us and who we are and what we're going to do is so incredible. But then he actually comes back, and when he comes back, he puts his foot down, and then, guys, the world splits. There's literally an earthquake happens. If you and I ever have a chance to go to London, England together, one of the places that I will take you is to Greenwich, England, because in Greenwich, England, right next to the Royal Observatory is a place that's called the Prime Meridian. The Prime Meridian is a laser beam that they shoot across or they have it etched in stone on the ground that literally represents where time begins and ends on the world. If you've ever heard the time Greenwich Mean Time, it literally means, well, according to the clock in London, Greenwich Mean Time. Like, well, what is that all about? Well, there was a time and there was a day, my friends, when the policy of England was to make the world England. By the way, the United States took care of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. And back in the year 1776, the sun went down and it no longer went down upon England. Okay, well, what that is all about is God Almighty created the earth to be 24,000 miles around. A clock is 24 hours around. Amen. By the way, there's 24 elders surrounding the throne. Okay, so the clock is 24 hours around. 
the world is 24,000 miles around, and if you, by the way, time and distance are in perfect continuum, time, distance, and matter. If you get rid of time, you get rid of distance, you get rid of distance, you get rid of time. Since they're both here, you cannot separate them. And where you can figure, your, where you can figure that you are at on the map is simply have a clock that tells you not, not what time it is here, but what time is it in London. Because if you look and if you go, dude, there's six hours difference between now and London time, that means you're 6,000 miles away from London. Are you guys tracking with me? It's like, well, okay, I thought we were talking about 1 Corinthians 15. I am. Let he who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. Because I want to tell you what's going to happen, guys. Whenever Jesus Christ comes back, He's going to put his foot down on a piece of real estate, and the real estate is going to split, and there's a new line. What is that? It's a new prime meridian. Time does not begin and end any longer with Greenwich, England. It begins and ends at the throne of Jesus Christ, which is set up in Jerusalem, Israel. A new prime meridian. Everything begins and everything ends at the throne of King Jesus once he comes back, and the world is different. The world is going to be very, very, very different. Well, Pastor Troy, that's pie in the sky. To you it is. But to the rest of us, this is our blessed hope. Jesus promised for 4,000 years the first time he was going to show up, and he did. He's only been promising for 2,000 years he's going to show up the second time. And my friends, he's about to. Amen. He's about to. And can I tell you something? If you're worried that you're, if you're worried that, man, I'm going to get ripped off, you don't have a clue what the return of Jesus is all about. You are not going to be ripped off. Listen, Jesus coming back is not the problem. Jesus coming back is the answer to everything, to absolutely everything. Well, whenever we're talking about these kinds of events and these amazing things and the real estate that Jesus puts his foot back on is not Texas. The real estate that he puts his foot back on is not Central America or South America. It's not Europe. It is literally Israel, and specifically Jerusalem, Israel. Okay? That is so important for us to understand, because as we, as we recognize prophetic events that have to do with Jerusalem, we are recognizing prophetic events that have to do with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about prophecy. Now, guys, this year has been a tremendous year of being able to see great prophetic events that are unfolding before our eyes. And guys, I want to just tell you, thank God that the body of Christ is beginning now to wake up and to speak this prophetic language. You know, it wasn't very long ago these kinds of things were taboo. It wasn't very long ago, 20 years ago when I first started preaching on order and how numbers are represented all through the Scripture, people would say, that's demonic, that's the devil, that's numerology, that belongs to the devil. Well, it belongs to the devil because you turned it over to him. And I'm taking it back. Hallelujah. Yes. The devil got no business looking into these things. Amen. It doesn't, belong to the, it doesn't belong to the devil's people. It belongs to the people of the kingdom. Amen. Uh, 20 years ago when I first started preaching, or actually 30 years ago when I first started preaching on, on the 12 major signs in the heavens and how the heavens declare the glory of God, everybody's like, dude, that, that's the devil. That's the devil. Well, again, the devil only has any authority or dominion as much as we have turned it over to him. Amen. So I'm like, you know, take it back. It's kind of like, you know, the modern day psalmist that said, why should the devil have all the good music? Amen. Take it back. Take it back. If you don't feel the anointing when you hear Tom Petty get up and sing Refugee, I don't even know if you're saved. Hallelujah. (laughs) Take it back. Take it back. Why you want to lay there and revel in your own abandon? Man, if that don't sound like a scripture, I don't know what does. Amen. Like, what are you talking about? I'm I'm not talking about churchy, churchy, churchy. I'm talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm talking about kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Well, all Jesus-loving people are looking for the return of Jesus, which means all kingdom people are prophetic people. And if you're like, well, I'm not really into that prophetic thing, that's not, that's because you're not really into the Jesus thing. I want to encourage you to get into the Jesus thing and become a prophetic person and start speaking this because literally, guys, there's been a rebirth of the language of the prophetic that's happened worldwide. I mean, you know, Ken was just telling me, man, that not only is there a super moon this month, there is a super blue moon this month. The, 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 the double whammy happens this month. And one of them is a total eclipse that's going to happen. Like, what are you talking about? Why would you even think about that? I don't know. It's because we love Jesus and we love the Bible. It's probably, probably because of that. Yeah. 
It probably is because of that. And you know what? John Hagee came out with the book, uh, the, Four, the Four Coming Blood Moons, and all of a sudden, the language of looking unto the heavens began to be spoken again, once again. And guys, this language has been laying dormant since the dark ages. And it's the church that suppressed it. In the name of control, and in the name of, man, you need to stay with the church program, we were not even allowed to know the Bible unless you could speak Latin, much less the language of the heavens. Hallelujah. But you know what, my friends? I tell you what, there is, we we live in the information age, and people are waking up to the prophetic events that are going on around us at an unprecedented rate, and it's a supernatural event. At the same exact time, guys, 70 years ago, whenever Israel first became a nation again, the resurgence of the Hebrew language, which had been a dead language for over 1,500 years, a dead language was resurrected, and people began to speak that. And by the way, I want to just tell you this, and you know, you can get mad at me if you want to, but at the same exact time, 100 years ago, when the resurgence of the Hebrew language began to happen, a brother by the name of Pastor Seymour at the Great Azusa Street Revival in the City of Angels began to preach on speaking in tongues, and then that began to come back at the same exact time. Like, what's, what's going on? Let me tell you what's going on. Jesus is coming back, and kingdom people are going to—there's an unprecedented— reality that you and I are living in today that our grandfathers did not get to walk in, because we live in accelerated time frames. And it's true, it's true that there's never been a day that you can get so messed up as today so fast. I'm telling you, that's the fact, Jack. Amen? But I want to tell you this too, there's never been a day that you can get so right and get so holy and get so into what God is doing so quickly as this day today. The closer that we get to, to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more time is speeding up. Time is relative, and if you don't believe me, get on the internet, look up a brother by the name of Einstein, and he came up with a theory of relativity and the theory of special relativity, which means time, which is also in perfect continuum with distance, which is also in perfect continuum with matter, is relative to different kinds of things. One of the things that time is relative to is redemption. Einstein didn't know that. Troy Brewer knows that. You know that. There's redeemed time and there's unredeemed time. There's a redeemed history and there's an unredeemed history. If you look at your history through the lens of redemption, you're not losing anything, you're gaining everything. If you look at history without redemption, you are losing everything. When it comes to unredeemed time, everything is in a position of being lost. When it comes to redeemed time, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming. Hallelujah. I say all those things, man, to say this to you, that, that this year there has been more prophetic events, not just, not, the, the quantity is completely unprecedented in the history of the church. There have literally been a thousand year period that we didn't see what it is that we've seen this year. But it's not just the quantity, it's the quality of how you can't deny it. You can't ignore it. It's in your fat face. What are you going to do about this? And it's like, man, when you see the convergence of the quantity and the quality of God going, ta-da, 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 ta-da. And if the world yawns to that, let the world yawn. But that's not going to be the body of Christ. Amen? We're going to be excited about what Jesus is excited about because we we are people of the King. Hallelujah. You know, the Great American Eclipse, the first one like it since 1776, is an eclipse that only touched the United States. It happened on August the 21st of this year in a 70-mile-wide shadow that lasted exactly one hour and 33 minutes, beginning at Salem, Oregon, passing over seven Salems (laughs) before it went out exactly one hour and 33 minutes. Like, I wonder what that means. Why don't you look up Psalms 133? Oh, how pleasant and how good it is for, dwell, for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like, the, it's like the oil that flowed down the beard of Aaron all the way down to his feet. God Almighty is saying there is an anointing now for people who will be unified in the body of Christ. There's an unprecedented anointing. And this is not a time for you to be gathered with the world. This is a time for you to know your tribe and for you to be gathered with the people of God that God Almighty has connected you with so that you'll be in the right territory in the, in, in the promised land, which means you're fighting the right battles and you're not fighting the wrong battles. Well, it marked the beginning of a, of a prophetic Joseph season of seven years of abundance. Because seven years from now, we're not going to have to wait another 182 years 
are 260 some odd years. I'm sorry, I'm thinking the fall of Alamo, forgive me. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're only going to have to wait another seven years. And there's a big X that's put right across the United States, and it crosses a place that's called Little Egypt, which again speaks of Joseph, which is a seven-year prophetic cycle of abundance. God Almighty is literally looking for people that He can trust with stewardship of wealth and finances and with, with, with treasures from heaven, amen, for the coming days when people will look to us and we say, we can help you with that. Or you can be into Star Wars. You can sit around and ponder the Justice League. You can worry, worry, worry about what Marvel is going to come out with next. Or you can be prophetic people. But you don't understand, Pastor Troy, this other stuff is so entertaining. Okay. Then your whole world can be about your pleasure and how you're entertained instead of your significance. Tell the person next to you, tell them, say, say, man, you ain't going to miss this. You ain't going to miss this. I'm telling you, man, you're not going to. It wasn't, it wasn't very long right after the Great American Eclipse happened that Harvey, a Category 4 hurricane, made landfall exactly four days after the Great American Eclipse, crossed over Corpus Christi, which means the body of Christ, and literally made landfall at Rockport, which represents people of faith. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And it happened four days after the Great American Eclipse and four weeks before the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah on the Jewish calendar, which is exactly four weeks before the Revelation 12 sign appeared in the heavens this year, featuring a woman with 12 stars over her head who symbolizes the 12 tribes of Israel. And the storm was the most powerful hurricane to make landfall in 12 years, and it brought 12-foot storm surges, and God was going, ta-da! Let he who has an eye to see, see what the Spirit is saying. Let he who has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. You know, all of this is right on the heels of the political miracle of Donald J. Trump, who was born on June the, 20, who was born on June the 14th of 1946, and on a day where the world announced over and over and over again, just like Steve Harvey had when he said, the crown goes on this person, the whole world, even at one o'clock in the afternoon, all the press, every single major press that there is was saying it's over. Hillary won it. Hallelujah. Yay, yay, yay. There's celebration in the streets. Let's party, let's party, let's party. And then just like the Steve Harvey debacle, they said, I'm sorry, we announced the wrong one. And you take off the crown and you put it on somebody else, which by the way, happened at the Miss Universe pageant, which Donald Trump owned a year before that. If you have an eye to see, you can see it. I'm not saying that Trump is godly. I'm not saying Trump is ungodly. You have to understand the prophetic symbolism that is within this so that you are in alignment for your assignment and you're not caught up with the mob that comes out of Hollywood and comes out of the left-wing socialists of this, of this country. Amen. On the day that he was inaugurated, which was January 20th, and uh, my, my good friends, I have some very personal good friends, actually played in the band, Josh Weathers and the Wicks, and, and, and Nick, who always plays bass. He didn't play bass up here today, but Nick, the guy, he was actually at the, he actually played at the inauguration of, of Donald Trump, which is just crazy. And on the day that that was, you know what day that was? That was January the 20th. So why is that a big deal? Because he was born on... June the 14th of 1946, like so. That means on the day that he became president of the United States, he was 70 years old, seven months, and seven days. In the year 5777 on the Jewish calendar. It's like, dude, you can't make that up. Like, what? Are you kidding me? And dude, what's his name, guys? Trump. It's a prophetic name. And, it, and it's all about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't care. I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like blah, 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 blah. Can I just tell you, listen to me. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking the kingdom. And you need to get past your little cringe meter that says, but Hollywood don't approve. To hell with Hollywood. <laughs> hell with it. 
To hell with the spirit of socialism that is in this country that wants to rob you of absolutely everything that you have and take away your freedom. Do not try and make friends with that spirit. I want to tell you something, man. Hey, you need to tap into my world and get a stack of hate mail every single week, and you'll learn after a while. There's just some folk I just can't be friends with. Hallelujah. It's good. I want to tell you something. It's good to get hate mail. It's good for you. It really and truly is. It's, it's good for me to get hate mail and go, you know what, man? I'm, I'm doing the right thing. This is, how, this is how this works. Donald Trump got up. And he said these amazing words on December 6th, on my 51st birthday. Thank you, God, for that amazing pres- present. <laughs> I have determined that it is time to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Well, guys, whenever he got up and recognized that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, for any, here's the deal. If you, for you to recognize Jerusalem is the capital of Israel is for you to recognize that God is God. Now, I want you to understand this. Like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. This is coming into agreement with the Word of God. It's coming into agreement with the identity that God Almighty has dictated. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm sorry, Chronicles chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, he says, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city and all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house that my name might be there. And I chose no man as a prince over my people Israel, but I have chosen Jerusalem that my name may be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. That's, that's what the Bible says. Now, obviously, the world that hates the Bible hates the idea of Israel being the cap. I'm sorry, of Jerusalem being the capital. Can you imagine the audacity if, say, Mexico said, you know, we don't like your government, so we've decided that Los Angeles is your capital. Would, would you be okay with that? Like, wait a minute, you can't tell us as a nation that you don't recognize our capital city, which is where our Knesset is, which is where our Supreme Court is which we literally rule and reign out of this city. You can't tell us that you're okay with it being Tel Aviv, but you're not okay with it. Who do you think you are? Yet that is exactly what the world has done, and that's exactly even what the United States has done. We're like, well, we might offend somebody who wants to kill us, and that makes sense to us. Well, it don't make sense to me. We might offend somebody who would like to wipe out everybody in this room. We might, we might make somebody mad who is enslaving Christians all over the world. Well, that don't make sense to me, dude. And finally, we got a wrecking ball in the White House that kind of makes him happy to make everybody mad. That brother is a trip to me, man. That brother is just a trip. And listen, I'm not, up here, I'm not up here campaigning for Donald Trump. I'm campaigning for Jesus. You have to be able to understand the language I'm speaking. And if not, it's because you are a part of a political culture, but you're not part of a kingdom culture. And my friends, how can we have prophetic ministry in the church if we're not going to have prophetic culture in the house? Hallelujah. Well, this, I want to show you the response of Benjamin Netanyahu, I have a, a video, and this is the response of Prime Minister Netanyahu. This is a historic day. Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. It's been the capital of Israel for nearly 70 years. It was here that our temple stood, our kings ruled, our prophets preached. Jerusalem has been the focus of our hopes, our dreams, our prayers, For three millennia, from every corner of the earth, our people yearn to return to Jerusalem, to touch its golden stones, to walk its hallowed streets. So it's rare to be able to speak of new and genuine milestones in the glorious history of this city. Yet today's pronouncement by President Trump is such an occasion. We're profoundly grateful for the President for his courageous and just decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and to prepare for the opening of the U.S. Embassy here. This decision reflects the President's commitment to an ancient but enduring truth, 
to fulfilling his promises and to advancing peace. The president's decision is an important step towards peace, for there is no peace that doesn't include Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. I call on all countries that seek peace to join the United States in recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move their embassies here. I share President Trump's commitment to advancing peace between Israel and all of our neighbors, including the Palestinians. This has been our goal from Israel's first day, and we will continue to work with the President and his team to make that dream of peace come true. I also want to make clear, there will be no change whatsoever to the status quo at the holy sites. Israel will always ensure freedom of worship for Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. President Trump, thank you for today's historic decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The Jewish people and the Jewish state will be forever grateful. Hallelujah. Okay. Friends, the Bible warns that the destiny of the world is inseparable from Israel and specifically from Jerusalem. There is no return of the Lord Jesus Christ without Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. Do you understand that? Now, I want to say this too, that guys, when you hear in the news that it is, when you hear Israel in the news and whenever you see Israel in the headlines, okay, that is, that's God's prophetic clock and that's like the minute hand turning. But when you see Jerusalem in the news, that's the second hand turning. Did you catch us like, we didn't move a minute, we just moved an hour. Boom. And that needs to get your attention. There are certain things, friends, that as kingdom people, we recognize as a showstopper. And listen, we don't view things as the world views things. We don't see things as the world sees things. We see things through a prophetic kingdom eye that is madly in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a showstopper. And if you're like, whoa, you know, I thought it was a big deal, but I didn't realize what a big deal it is. This is, listen, this is what you need to know. You can be deceived in this day. There can be like the biggest, greatest event in the whole world taking place, and you can miss it because of the drama over, I'm a boy and I need, to, I need to act like I'm a girl, or I'm a girl and I need to act like I'm a boy and we're going to make it, or your whole world's going to be about the confusion over bathrooms. Not me. Amen? And because of drama, which is all the mob has, and by the way, if it's, if it's more dramatic, then you feel it more, and if it's feel, if you feel it, it has to be real. That's what our nation tells us now. If you feel it, you are it. No, if you will it, you are it. Not if you feel it, it's if you will it. Amen. I feel all kinds of crazy stuff all the time. I save girls out of sexual trafficking. I, I feel like being the machine gun preacher sometimes. I'm not the machine gun preacher. And I bless him. Call him blessed, by the way. He's in northern Uganda, right there by where our orphanages are. And sometimes you need a machine gun preacher. Hallelujah. But that's not me. That's not my calling. I feel that, but I don't will that. Amen? I'm not supposed to be a slave to my feelings. My feelings are supposed to be a slave to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so I say all that to say this to you, and you guys need to know this, that you can, you, you need to understand, it's just like, just like the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that there were angels involved. There were incredible prophetic events. There were signs in the heavens. There were kings and magi coming from the east. It was incredible, and everybody but a handful of people missed it. Did you understand that? I want you to know this. I think that the marriage supper of the Lamb, whenever it talks about, and this is just going to make some people mad, like, now nah, I know you're whack. I want to just tell you. The, the rapture is reserved for people who have their oil ready. They are living that life, and that's what it is that they're looking for. Just because you got real estate in heaven doesn't mean that you hear the trumpet whenever he, whenever he does his flyby. And if you don't believe me, look in the Bible, because there's five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. So there's ten people who have been set aside for the cause of Christ. They belong to Christ. But five of them are living a life that are looking for the return, and five of them are not, and the five that are not misses it. 
It's in the Bible, dude. You can, you can argue uh, whatever your theology is on that. I don't care. I'm just making a point and just telling you this. It's just like any prophetic thing. You have to be a seer and you have to be a hearer in order to see it and in order to hear it. And that's on us. It's not upon anybody else. You can be just as much into the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and just as much into what God Almighty is saying to the churches as you can, into, as you can be into Star Wars and Marvel Comics. You can learn every single character, you can learn every single date, you can learn every single timeline, if that's where your heart is. Now I want to tell you, dude, listen, I'm not against, I certainly ain't against Star Wars. I mean, my cousin is a Wookiee. Peter Mayhew is my cousin, and I love him. Yeah, doesn't that make sense, guys, that y'all's pastor would have a Wookiee as a cousin? <laughs> and Peter May, he's a friend of mine. He's a guy that plays Chewbacca. He's a friend of mine, and he's been very good to me. He's very gracious to me. Every time I see him, he is gracious to me. His, his wife, Angelique, is, is close to me. We talk all the time. We love each other. I'm not against Star Wars. I want, you, I want you to understand. What I'm against is being deceived. What I'm against is being so in love with the things that the world has to offer, we miss what heaven is doing right in front of us. Well, on Yom Kippur, which was September the 30th, Leanna and I was in Jerusalem, and I go, I go there every year for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. And Yom Kippur for me is a day of praying and fasting, and I have the great privilege of being able to do that, so I do that. I mean, come on, wouldn't you do that if you could do that? So I'm finally, I can finally do that, and so I do that now. And this, on September the 30th, Leanna and I was in the Holy City, and we were walking around. You have to walk around because nobody drives in Israel on that day, okay? And people literally have picnics in the streets and the highways, and people literally walk down the highway and walk down the streets because no cars run. And we always get a hotel that's real close to the old city or real close to the walls, knowing that we're going to have to walk, you know, to go to the Wailing Wall. And while we were there, we were walking around, and Leanna and I was walking around through the city, and we went over into the Christian section, we went over into the Muslim section, we were over, of course, in the Jewish section whenever we went to the wall. And we did all that kind of stuff, and then we came across a consulate from Argentina. There's a consulate. And I was like, is that the embassy or is that a consulate? No, it's a consulate. Now, even the United States has a consulate there in Jerusalem, but we do not have the embassy there. And right then, right there, Leanna and I begin to pray, Father God, bring the embassy here. And we started praying that. And instantly, God spoke to me and said, I'm doing it, and I'm doing it right now. And I told Leanna, I just, I just heard God speak. God just told me he's moving the embassy here. And she said, really? And I said, yes. And I said, let's pray about that. And she said, Lord, I just heard you speak. And Father God, sir, you're telling us, Lord, that you're moving the embassy here. And I'm saying yes and amen to that. Hallelujah. I called Ron Cantor. Dude, tell all your prophetic people that God Almighty just spoke to me on the Day of Atonement, on Yom Kippur. God Almighty spoke to me and said that the American embassy is coming. And I told, I told Ron that. I told all the prophetic people that we were hanging out with over there, I really heard God speak, and it's coming. Okay. On December 6th, that was on September the 20th, okay? And, and, and that's actually September the, what day is that? September the 30th. September the 30th was uh, Yom Kippur. On December the 6th, on my 51st birthday, President Trump announced this. And guys, I want to just tell you something. That's 67 days later. That's very interesting because it was in 1967, exactly 50 years ago, that the Jews took over Jerusalem. Are you with me on that? So this was something that God specifically spoke to me, and it has to do, the, and I'm supposed to be a player in this. Are you guys with me on this? Okay, I'm also going to tell you this too. On December the 6th, on the same day, there is an apostolic council in Jerusalem that invites way people a whole lot better than me to come that they pray over on the day of Pentecost. On the same day, I was invited by the Apostolic Council of Jerusalem to be there on the day of Pentecost, and they want to recognize, as a, they want to recognize us as a world-changing church. And can I tell you what the door was for that? The prophetic word. Guys, I want to just, I just want to just throw this out there to you and just tell you this. This is, you say, well, this is just a symbol. That's all that this is. It's, it's not just a symbol, which by the way, a symbol is powerful. When you walk and when you, when you come in alignment with an symbol of something that is otherwise invisible, 
you position yourself under an open window of heaven. But this is actually a prophetic act. If we, if we lay hands on you and pray for you, that is the power of a prophetic act. If we anoint you with oil, that is the power of a prophetic act. Is there anybody in here that's ever been baptized? Baptism is a prophetic act. Baptism, you're like, well, I thought the, I thought the water was magic. That's because you're a hillbilly and you never take a bath. Amen. <laughs> If you took a bath all the time, you'd realize, man, water is not magic. What's so powerful about it then? It's it's an act of prophecy. It's a prophetic act. And then that positions you under an open window of heaven. Amen? And everything changes then because of the power of the prophetic act. Guys, this is a prophetic act that aligns us, and I want you to know it aligns us to be blessed like we've never been blessed before. Like, well, I I think it aligns us to be hated like we listen. You were already hated before this happened. But now they're really going to hate us. Well, how much can you hate us? And how much can we worry about it? (laughs) Because I'm not, I'm not going to sit around and worry about haters. Amen. I'm not going to do that. Here's what I'm saying to you. The anointing that is on Trump is a financial anointing. Do you agree with that? Okay. All right. When you position yourself with the Word of God and when you position yourself with Israel, you activate a blessing that activates your anointing. Okay. That is the President of the United States. We have just entered into, prophetically, according to the signs in the heavens, a seven-year cycle of blessing. And I just want to just tell you this, man. Listen, you say, what? Are you saying this is all about money? I'm saying this is all about you being positioned to be significant. And you don't want to miss this. This is not, hey, we're going to do everything the way that we've always done things. No, no, no. This is a different hour. This is a different time. And my friends, we need to go for this. I want to ask you guys to stand up if you would. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it says, consider carefully what you hear. With the measure that you use, it will also be measured back to you even more. Be determined you're going to hear this. Be determined you're going to contemplate this. Be determined that you're going to be engaged in what the Spirit is saying to the body of Christ. Because not only to the same measure that you dive off into this will it be measured back to you, but it brings with it a whole bunch more that you didn't even know how to get into. Be determined, my friends.